Hello everybody, this is Hawaii Favreau with a little update for you. I managed to install the sump today. Unfortunately, my video camera battery was dead, so I wasn't able to get any of the installation, unfortunately. I did get a few pictures, but uh, yeah, not quite the same. So, um, yeah, here we go, let's take a look at it. Might, you might, guys might not be able to tell, but uh, compared to the last one, it is a lot bigger. The other one was a 20 gallon sump. This one is a uh, 35 gallon, well, 35 to 40 gallons sump for a 160 gallon fish tank. It is 28 inches left to right by 16 inches front to back and 17 inches tall. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with the uh, uh, the purpose of a sump, I'm just going to go over that with you real quickly. Uh, so here is one overflow box and two overflow boxes. Those overflow boxes skim the water from the, su from the surface, which then travel down these two tubes here into these two filter socks, where they trap the uh, fine particles, fish waste, things like that in them. Filter socks are good for a pre- uh, I guess, uh, you know, stage one filtration. Um, however, they do have some cons in that if you do not change them out regularly, they can become a very large source, source of nitrate, which in turn will cause um, algae in your tank to grow. Um, also, if it gets too high, your fish might start to suffer cores as well. Uh, so, yeah, you definitely, if you do use filter socks like I do, you want to have a spare pair on hand, ready to go. Um, I wash mine with uh, half a cup of bleach um, in the washing machine and then I just do an extra rinse afterwards. And as long as you can't smell bleach on them after they've finished in the washing machine, then you're good to go. So, next in this stage is the protein skimmer. The protein skimmer will remove proteins from the tank which will break down and turn into nitrites, nitrates and in some cases ammonia as well, although it's my understanding that ammonia is released directly from the fish, so this protein skimmer will remove that out of the water through a form of aeration. Very useful to have, um, and it does cut out a large portion of water changes as well, so I do water changes once every two weeks with this tank. Um, and if I didn't have the skim, I'd probably have to do them once a week. Uh, next stage here we have a bubble trap. Um, the protein skimmer does typically release micro bubbles into the sump, so this is a good place for those bubbles to be trapped and absorbed. Uh, in the next stage, so let me just explain, it will come in and down, and then the water travels back up again between these baffles and into the exit chamber. In this section here, I have chemical filtration, which is made up of um, Seachem Purigen, which helps to remove um, nitrates, nitrates and ammonia, as well as, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? It does the same thing that carbon does, and that it improves your water clarity as well. Um, it is 400% more efficient than the next product behind it that does similar um, functions. So this is definitely um, a good way to replace carbon in your tank. You don't need to keep replenishing it. You can um, replenish it yourself by actually just soaking it in bleach overnight. It is ready to be, uh, when it's fully exhausted, it will actually be a very dark, dark brown, almost a black. Um, and they're very small little balls in a way. So those will um, you know, you don't, if you have these, you don't need carbon, basically. Um, in the next chamber, we have the exit chamber. Um, I have a Coral Life Turbo Twist up here, and I also have the BRS GFO reactor as well, both of which the um, small pumps... Oh, crap. Um, I stupidly put the system on standby. Um, for an hour and uh, time ran out so I'll get to it um, the GFO reactor is from bulk resupply 
and I am using the high capacity uh, phosphate reduction media and uh, this reactor on its own is actually only suitable for um, a tank of about 100 gallons but when you use the high capacity GFO media um, it pretty much doubles that so you don't need very much and I've, in about six months I've used this much so um, yeah we have the mag 18 which is the return pump and we also have the um, probes down there pH and temp so the water is in I haven't myself turned on the sump yet I just firstly let me point out as well that the water movement throughout the sump is a trick that I picked up on other users sumps to stop uh, particles and diatris um, settling at the bottom of the sump so I installed one Coralia pump here and another one there that was just the Nano and this is an Evo 1040 so that definitely keeps things moving in the tank so I'm a little nervous now because I think I've calculated enough water if not then uh, we have a problem I'll have to add some more but I'm pretty confident that this will do the job so I'm going to turn the system back on and we'll see how it goes there we go have a jug on standby if we need it I'm sorry a five gallon bucket with a jug in it if we need it but uh, looking at the water levels in the tank and then this is going to be close okay no I think we're good actually we are good wow that is perfect actually that is brilliant very very happy I think I'm going to have to add a little bit more water actually just a little bit not much Also, the benefit of having a larger sump means that it holds more water volume in it. So because of the higher water volume that the protein skimmer is sitting in, it actually allows the protein skimmer to be more efficient. So another plus for having this larger skimmer. Also, it gives me more room in the exit chamber as well for all the various uh, pumps that we have in here. I think what I will do is because I have um, the pure gen in a high flow area which is where you want your chemical filtration to be there are still gaps where water is able to get through without touching the pure gen so I think what I might do is actually get another uh, bottle of the pure gen and a few more um, of the uh, bags and we'll put four more in there I think just to ensure that uh, water has to go through the puree gen. I thought about wrapping them around the uh, intake of the mag 18 but uh, I don't think that would be such a good idea. Uh, Alright, you know what I've realized also is that this is probably an excellent time for me to feed the fish and show you how much they enjoy the DIY food that I provide them with so let me do that now so I feed these guys about three to four cubes give or take a day um, that depends on if that figure depends on if they have nori or not so let me grab those as you can see they're already waiting for it they know it's coming <laughs> So right now I'm just going to give them half a cube, and we'll see how long that lasts. So I actually put it in here, I have a little gap, just a small one, but I'll dump it in. And there you 
CPR. They are loving that. And that half cube is gone already. So if you're interested in seeing the recipe for that, um, it's back in my previous videos. And it's a two-parter. I'm going to put in the other cube, another, put in a whole cube this time. That went really fast. I leave the MP40s on when I'm feeding them. Um, I can't remember who it was, but uh, I was watching a video, and uh, they made a fair point in that in nature and in the wild, when fish eat, there's no break in the currents, there's no break in the surges or swells. So I wanted to keep that as natural as possible. Yeah, you know, these guys seem really hungry tonight, so I'm going to give them another one in a minute. But as you can see, they go absolutely nuts for this food. Um, so I definitely encourage you guys to take a look at that video. Um, not only did the fish enjoy it, but it saved me a lot of money. I've only I bought all the ingredients initially um, when I first set up the tank. And then, since then, I've only had to buy um, a mixed pack of frozen seafood and uh, raw shrimp. And I've, and I've, you know, I've, I haven't used up all the ingredients, so they're just sitting in the freezer or they're um, stashed away. And then I only get those ingredients out when I uh, make up a new batch of food. Because the only thing I need to buy is the uh, seafood medley pack, and then some. I buy. Um, raw shrimp as well but uh, yeah they go absolutely nuts for it so I hope you guys enjoyed the video um, probably won't be doing one for a little while uh, I might you know show you some new fish as I go but that will be it really I'm, I'm pretty happy with the tank I don't intend on making any changes and uh, the only thing I'll be doing really is adding new fish so like I said it'll be the last update for a little while I think unless something drastic changes but uh, yeah, thank you for watching, and hopefully we'll see you again soon.